Chapel of the month of August, we will be uh, talking about ties that bind us together. So we start with, what is a tie? What is, you know, that binds it together? It's a connection. It's a commonality that we share. Okay? It's a connection that we share. So for us in our immediate family, we have those we are related with. So that's the connection we share. My parents, my siblings, those of you who have children, those of you who have cousins, we all have share blood relations with people in our media family. And then there's God's family, all of us here today, the congregation. We share Jesus Christ. We share our faith in God. That is what brought us all here together. That is the cord that brings us together. That is the cord that we share together. Amen? So one of the things that we can use as a tie that bonds us together is food. Amen. But <laughs> food, anyways. <laughs> For those of you who know, I love to eat. You know, I'm sure most of you can share the same sentiment. I like to eat, okay? So there's just something about food that brings all of us together. Whether it's mom's cooking, whether it's we all go out and eat, there's something about food that brings us together. Okay? If we look at uh, Luke 22, verse 7 through 21, that is the Last Supper. That is where Jesus, using food symbolically, the bread for his body and the wine as his blood, to tie us together. Holy communion. He used food. We see many times in the Bible, Jesus went to weddings. Jesus went to one celebration or another. He kept using food. He fed the multitude. He, he reached and connected with people through food. So there's something special about food that brings us together. And another thing about food is the celebration of it all. I don't know about you, but I went to many graduation parties this summer. I went to birthdays this summer. I went to weddings this summer. We went to a lot of things. Food was there. Food was something that we could all try to use and get to know each other better. A conversation over a meal. Getting to know each other over dinner. Little things like that. It's the little things that add up and what makes a connection with each other. I see um, binds, I see bonds, I see ties as a chain. The, it's the little things over time that adds up the chain that links us all together. And it starts with salvation for our family in Christ Jesus. It starts with salvation. And each little step that we take together and as individuals brings us all together to connect with each other. Amen? Amen. The next thing is togetherness. You know, we are here together. We gather to pray. We gather to do things. We gather to see each other every week, okay? And when we're in the company of each other, there's just a connection that we make with each other. You don't have to be physically next to the person. In my school, um, I've been very blessed when I've been up in Creighton to have people who call me every now and again just to check up on me. Say, Andrew, how are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. You know, the classes are going like this. Okay, I just wanted to see and make sure that your day is doing good. Is there anything you'd like for me to pray for? And I would say, yes, please help me in my studies. Please pray for me to consistently show God's love. Okay, the little things like that, two, three-minute conversations, nothing long, nothing, you know, just one phone call a week or one phone call every now and again. Those little things, that togetherness, that contact with each other is what helps bind us together. Here, when we, people you only see only on Sundays, but over time, say you only go to Sunday service, or you only go to Wednesday, or you go to both, but you consistently do so. I Some people I only ever see on Sunday, but because I've been going to this church for so many years, I can say I can know a lot of people. I've only seen you on Sunday, and I won't see you again until next Sunday, and then the following Sunday, but over the years, over 5, 10, 15 years, we can share a connection with each other. Because we've been in contact with each other. As some of you may know, Christian, oh, no, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but Christian is my brother, and he's in a, a lot of, um, he's in a lot of departments. He's in, very involved. And I'm, sometimes I've been, I've been going with him to those, um, the places that he goes to, the things that he does. And one thing I noticed is that even if I was not a part of it, even if I was not involved, just being in the vicinity of other believers, I felt something. I, I can't explain it. I wouldn't be able to explain it. But I felt something being in the vicinity of other believers. Even if I wasn't doing anything, it's not required for you to say anything. It's not required for you to 
look at anyone, it's not required for you to pray with each other. Just being in the vicinity of each other and letting God's presence flow through, that can help bring the connection, that can what bring you together in Christ Jesus. Okay, and another thing, man, yes, our actions and our deeds, we have to do things. We can't be passive Christians. You can't be a Christian and, and be passive. You can't say you relate well with your siblings and be passive and be at home all day and not do anything. Okay, and one of the things you can do are activities. Um, family game night, family movie night. You go out and eat. You go out to um, the movies. You go out, little things like that. These little activities over time, we start to build something. We start to strengthen what we already have and we fill in the places that are missing. Little activities like this over time. Another thing you can do is outings. We go to conferences. We go to a car wash. We do volunteer work. At my church, there are people that I only ever see on Sundays because I'm, only, I'm not available during the week, so I only can go on Sundays to a church I go to in Omaha. And because I volunteer, I've had someone come up to me and say, oh, you're the person who volunteers at so-so and so every Friday. I was like, yes, I'm the person who comes and works with you guys to try to you know, feed the homeless and do little things like that. That conversation would not have started if I did not go out of my way, if, did I, if I did not go out of the house and go and try to make connections with people, if I did not go out of the house, uh, out of my dorm, you know, and just set aside my studying and set aside my personal time to go out and to go do volunteer work. Don't underestimate little things like outings and activities and conferences. Don't underestimate those things because those things can, over time, again, it's like a chain. They build upon each other and they grow and create a solid foundation on which you can continue to grow more and more. Amen? Amen. And let's look at it in more detail, more spirit. Coming together and praying. You know, coming together and having communion. Going to convention with another family. Having fellowship with each other. Things like that. That where we come and connect with each other. If we look at 1 John 1, verse 3, if you can put that on the screen. 1 John 1, verse 3. Yes, it says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship, praying together, communion together, going to convention, Holy Ghost service night. These spirit-led, spirit-filled things help us bind with each other, help us connect with each other. It helps us bring us closer for people we may not meet, some people you only see at convention. But because you've consistently gone to convention, you started a relationship, you started a connection, you started to bind with each other, you started to draw closer to each other, people you would not have met otherwise. You did not go to service every Sunday, if you were not Christians, if you did not have some shared interest, if you did not go to convention, if you did not have fellowship with each other. With that said, you know, sometimes it's not all rainbows and unicorns. You know, there's, for some reason, a thinking today by those who are not Christians that, or once you become a Christian, it's all good, it's your set, things will start rolling. No, there, there will be challenges. Jesus said that you'll have trials and tribulations, but I'll not give you something that you cannot overcome. But there are things that, that can weaken and get into place and interrupt our bonds that we have with each other. And one of those things, if you can put this slide up, things that can weaken our bonds, next slide, is loose tongues, idle chatter, you know, gossip, rumors, engaging in things, engaging in talks. You know, one of the things about loose tongues and idle chatter is that you don't think, you just start speaking. You don't, you don't even know what you're saying. You're just talking and you're just talking and just, oh, 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 did you hear about this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You didn't hear about anything. But you just say, yes, I did. You just, you just answer, what, yes, I did. You don't want to be the person who didn't know about this, who didn't hear about this. So you say, yes, I heard this. You didn't hear anything. So you speak without thinking. There is a lack of understanding of the topic. You misquote something. Ignorance. Ignorance. Speaking out of ignorance. You don't understand what's going on, but yet you're just, you're just conversing. 
You're just conversing with each other, and there's when you do when you engage in these things, there's a level of insensitivity that comes with this. You're not taking to account the person you're talking about. If you want somebody else to talk to you, to talk about you in these in this manner, people who don't know who you are and are making assumptions, nobody wants that. But there's a level of insensitivity that sometimes we ignore intentionally or we just lack awareness of when it comes to when we're just idle chatter and rumors and gossip and things of that nature. And then there's just plain lies. You're just, you're just saying anything. You want to add, you want to find the flames, as they call it. Find the flames, make it bigger, make it more dramatic. You know, in today's age, we all love drama in one way or form. There's drama everywhere. There's drama on social media. There's drama in our schools. There's drama everywhere. You want to fan the flames. You want to make it more exciting. And it's not exciting if we're only telling the truth. We have to put half truths and white lies and black truths and, you know, just things that are just not true to try to make it more interesting, to make it more exciting. You know, hey, we can get off for rumors. We can get off. Oh, yes, I heard this. Yes, sit down. Pull up the seats. You know, so these. You look at James 4, verse 11. It says, do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law and you are not a doer of the law, you are not a doer of the law, but you are judged. Do not speak evil of one another. Do not spread rumors. Do not say things that you do, you do not know. You know, some people say, well, I'm just blunt, so I just say things. No, 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 no. That's, that's no longer blunt. That's being insensitive to the person. That's having a lack of awareness. There are some things in some places you shouldn't say. There are some things in some places you shouldn't say. There are some things to some people you shouldn't say for whatever reason. But you lack awareness. Oh, well, I didn't know. It's your job to know. There are no fools among us. There are no fools in my family. And there's no fools in the family of God, okay? God did not raise any fools among us. And God himself is not a fool. If we look at, um, if we look at Ephesians 5 verse 4. Okay, it says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Don't say you know me if you engage in foolish talks. Don't say you know me. Don't say you know anyone else. Don't do this to your fellow brothers. There are some things you wouldn't say because somebody is your brother, because it's your parent. I've been asked a lot, Andrew, why don't you, when they're off engaging in, in conversation, when they're off, oh, we're about to go do this, go do that. Like, Andrew, why don't you join? I was like, do you know who my mother is? <laughs> do you know who she is? Okay, I can't do that because that would disappoint her. I can't do this because that would disappoint God. I can't talk about this person because this person's a Christian. This person's my neighbor. This person's my friend. And I love them with my full heart just as God loves me. So if you have the shared interest of each other in mind, you will not engage in certain conversations. You will not be around certain people, okay? That's the next thing that we fall into the trap of are the friends that we keep. We feel, we feel the pressure. We let outside forces, we let outside things come and influence our decision, influence what we say. You know, especially for us teens, for us youth, we feel the pressure. We know you adults, you feel the pressure in, in, um, in your workplace when you're among your friends. But we especially, we feel it in the schools. We feel it everywhere we go. We feel it here in church. We just, just to, eh, just let this one slide. You know, there's a bit of hesitation. You know, God says he's not giving us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of boldness. But I found, I've seen a lot of times, because I like to observe things, that when somebody's being bullied, when somebody's being talked bad about, I see other Christians, other people, I was like, oh, I thought I knew this person stand by the side, and I just, I didn't, I didn't hear anything, I didn't see anything, they engage themselves, or they walk away. Would you want somebody to walk away if you were, no, you wouldn't. When people talk bad, when people spoke bad about Jesus, when people spoke bad about his disciples, they didn't remain quiet, they didn't remain quiet, okay, so don't allow outside pressure, external forces to influence the way you speak, to influence the way you think, to influence the way you interact with people, okay? And another thing that 
you know, gets to us is, because you've heard the statements before, the devil made me do it. So are you saying the devil took your hand and said, come this way. If you don't, I'll just finish you. He said, come this way and do this. He didn't do that. But you allowed him to whisper in your ear, this is okay. The, well, the Bible doesn't say this is wrong. Well, the Bible doesn't cover this. Well, the Bible doesn't mention this. Well, this is a gray area. Well, I'm sure it's okay. God is an understanding God. When we let the devil come and start speaking in our ear new things, different things from what we know is to be true, from what we know is right, we let him start influencing us a little bit. We let him start getting to us, to influence what we say. You know, the Bible says we resist the devil and he will flee, but sometimes we don't resist, either because we would stand out, either because we don't want the attention on us, either because we're not bold enough to say, no, I won't do this, I won't do that, because the God I serve would not want me to do this. If we take a look at Psalms 1 verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Be mindful of the friends that you have. Be mindful of the company that you keep. Because while Jesus went to the Gentiles to preach to them, Jesus was walking around with his disciples, those who were Christians, those who were saved. He wasn't walking around going from this place to that place with unbelievers. He wasn't going around sitting and engaging in, as the Bible calls it, coarse jesting or foolish talks. No, he was having, they were having fellowship 24-7, even when they were asleep. I'm sure he was fellowshipping with them even as they were asleep. He was engaging in good things. See no evil, do no evil is what the Bible says. Speak no evil is what I, will, I would also say to you. Do not speak evil of one another. Do not let the enemy come and try to sow discord inside the church, to sow discord inside of your family. Because when you start allowing that to happen, you will see the church fall apart. We'll see different viewpoints, and then we'll see, um, we'll see discord. We'll see disunity when God calls for us to have unity. But it's not all bad, you know. There's always, as they say, joy comes in the morning. So if the darkness of the night, there's joy in the morning, there's hope. And in that hope is the hope of God, is the love of God. And we all know the song, I love you, you love me. We're one great big family. Okay, love. God's love can overcome things that we normally would not be able to. When someone betrays you, it's God's love. And it's only God's love for that person and that leads to forgiveness. You can't forgive them by yourself. You can try. But, oh, no, I forgive you. You know, I remember that last time last week. But, no, no, I forgive you. You've not forgiven anybody. Because, because love says it keeps no record of wrong. It does not remember those things. It, it blank slates every time, every week is what love does. You know, there's two things about God's love that really stood out to me. It was the depth of God's love and the power in God's love. If we look at the story of the prodigal son, he said, I wanted my inheritance, I wanted my money, and I said, and I want to just get out of here, you know? And then he left, and then he left for we don't know how long, but I imagine it was years. He went and just wasted it away, wasted his life, and then he came back. And on his way back, if we look at Luke 15, 11 to 12, then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion that falls to you. So he divided his livelihood. If we go down and scroll down, all the way down, it said in verse 20. Can we put up verse 20? And I'll read from here, New King James Version. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And he said, and, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be your son. But the father said, that's not true. He said, you will always be my son. You know, the thing that stood out to me was he ran towards his son. He didn't wait for his son to crawl back to him like you returned. Very good. No, he, he ran to him. God runs to us. God chases after us, after our heart, after our soul, after our mind. And using God's love, the depth of God's love, we too should chase after each other to get to know each other better, to show God's love. You know, that's the depth of God's love. It's infinite. It's all-encompassing. It's all-overcoming. 
Dear Heavenly Father, please help us, O oh Lord, to show your love. For as you have shown love to us unconditionally, without any questions, you've given us two great commandments, to love you as our God and to love each other as ourselves. Lord, help us to show your love as well. Help us, O oh Lord, to show the compassion in each other. For Proverbs 27, verse 5 says, Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Lord, help us to show this love and not conceal it. As our light that should not be kept under a basket, but should shine to the world, so too should our love shine to each other and everyone else. For in Jesus' name that we pray.